Dear students, welcome to the second tutorial of lesion to symptom mapping. Today I'm going to show you how you perform the statistical analysis in a lesion to symptom analysis after you've already normalized the lesion images. To do so today you just need MRIcron software. You can find MRIcron using the link below the video and they will find a zip file that contains MRIcron. Just download the zip file onto your computer and in MRIcron you will find npm.exe. That's the program we need today, but you can take the whole MRIcron folder if you've not already done so and copy it onto your computer at any place. Besides the software, you will need data. I provided you with some data on Elias and you will see that there are two kinds of lesion formats. Today we just need the VOI format, not the nifty ones. Unzip the VOI files and you will see that there are 80 lesion images. You can open lesion images in NMIcron. Go on File, Open Template and choose a template style like CH2. If we now go on Draw, Open VOI, you can open a VOI file and we see that this is a normalized lesion map. Open VOI can also open other formats like Nifty, so feel free to also look at Nifty files here. The important thing is these images have been normalized to standard space here in MNI space and there are binary so either a box is red or not red lesion or not lesion this is what we need for the lesion analysis the last thing we need are behavioral data if you look into the excel file you'll see that there are 80 lines for each lesion one line and there are two columns of symptoms the symptom scores here are actually the same, just inverted, um, of a maximum score of 100. The reason is that different lesion analysis tools require different codings of behavior. Imagine in aphasia you could either give high scores for having a lot of aphasia or having a lot of language capabilities preserved. So what a high score means differs and different tools will require different codings, I will tell you what you need and just provided you both in case you want to try out different lesion analysis tools. Now we can start the action analysis with NPM. Double click on NPM Excel and in the upper panel of NPM you'll find VLSM. That's where you find several kinds of analysis for binary images. That is something we already have available. And for either binary groups, that means binomial behavioral data, which is not the case for the example data set, or for continuous groups. This is for continuous behavioral data, and this is what we have available. We have scores ranging from 0 to 100. First of all, we have to set up the design. Click on VLSM design and click again on design. There. You first of all have to select that we only have one predictor and you have to choose how often a voxel has to be damaged to be included into the analysis. You can just choose 10. Go on select images and then choose all lesion images that belong to our analysis. So select all 80 images. Click on OK and again on OK. Then we come to this menu. On the left you will see the name of the lesion images and on the right you'll have an empty column. You can copy paste the behavioral scores into this empty column and here we need the right column where higher scores mean less symptom. Just copy paste it into the empty column. That's all we need. Go to file, save and save this design file. The outcome is a .val file, that is a specific kind of file for NPM. Now we can perform the analysis by clicking on VLSM, Binary Images, Continuous Groups. Click 
on the VAL file we just produced and then we can select what the output file should be called. We can just choose the default, click on save and the next window we ask if we need a explicit mask, we do not need it, so cl just click on cancel. We can ignore this warning and afterwards the analysis starts. This can take a few seconds or minutes. And after some time, the GUI will tell you that the analysis has been finished. Now you can find in the folder where you place the VAL file several new files that were produced in the analysis. There are three files that we actually need now. This is results BM, that's Bronner Munsell test, results T test, and a txt file. The txt file is very central to everything. Not only you will find information about what we put into the analysis, and for example how many, how often a voxel had to be damaged, but also the results. We'll see soon what it means. First of all we open one of these images. Let's start with the t-test image and we open it in MRI cron. Click on File, Open Template, CH2 to open a background template. And then on Overlay, Add, and choose the results t-test file. And here we have the statistical map. We can change the color scaling, for example, to ACTC to get some rainbow colorish uh, color grading. And now we have to look in a text file. They will see that there was a certain range of T statistic values and there's a certain range of values shown in the image and we can change it to show all voxels. You'll see that most voxels are bluish and there are some area where there are other colors inside. These are the areas that have been included in analysis. Remember, we only test the voxels damaging at least a certain amount of individuals. The blue areas have not been tested, so they probably all have a zero. Now we again look at a text file on a t-test. We'll find a whole range of t-test statistics inside the image and some cutoffs for either FDR corrected t-tests at 0 0.05 or at 0 0.01 and for not FDR corrected, the minus FDR, this is the family wise error correction with permutation testing. Do you find values of 9.2? 9.2 here is not an actual number, it means that no results have been found. This is Unfortunately, just a strange way of NPM telling us that there are, no, there are no results. So here we have to go for the FDR corrected results that are much more liberal than family wise error correction. For P.01, this cutoff was 2.48. So we put into MRI-cron 2. Point and so on and go to the maximum of 8.3. And so MRI-cron now depicts all voxels that are above the cutoff after FDR correction. So this also means that all voxels that are shown in color now are significant. That is the neurocorrelate of the behavior we investigated. You might remember we did not only a t-test but also a bronner munsell test. You find information about the Brown and Munsell test also in the text file and you have the image available. Open the image on a template and again we have to rescale the image. First you might realize that there's no family wise error correction result. Again no significant results left but FDR. Go into the upper left panel for the rescaling and put in the cutoff and in the right you put in the maximum value that you can also see in a text file. And again, we have a collection of voxels that are shown in color and these are significantly associated with the symptom. 
Now, you might ask what kind of symptom you investigated here. What kind of data did I provide you? The data were not real behavioral data. The data originated from a simulation. What this exactly is, you will hear in the next lecture, lecture number three. Right now, you, I can tell you that this data originated from data from damage to the AEL region of the insula, this black region here. The AEL is Atlas of Cortical Region. You can open it on the file, open template AEL, and all patients that had damage to the insula got higher symptoms. This AEL you can also use to interpret the results. Open the AEL as a template, and upon this AEL, you put the statistical map and you threshold it. Again, with the values that are found in the text file. So this is the same statistical map like we've seen before. If you now go on draw descriptors, you can see a list of regions that are affected. This is relevant if you want an interpretation of the statistical results. As I explained in the lecture, after a statistical analysis, we need some kind of atlas to see where the statistical map lies. Because, for example, the CH2 template where we always show our results on, that's not been used for normalization. Back to the data. So you did your first lesion analysis, but of course, with the data I provided you, you can do more. You have the inverted and the non-inverted behavioral scores, and you have nifty and void files. For example, you could use download the program that followed up NPM by the same scientists. And on the page of NISTAT, you find the link uh, under the video. There you can also find some introduction that explains what the program is able to do and how you use it. There are some additional steps, but if you want to try it out, you have everything you need. There are also other tools, for example, Ligi Map by Dorin Lus Pustina. This is a little bit more complex because it's based on R in Linux. If you are a Linux user and if you use R, you can go on the homepage and see how it's installed. Maybe you succeed installing it quickly and then you can do lesion analysis in Ligi Map. It can do not only univariate analysis, but also some special kind of multivariate analysis, also something you hear about the next time. Talking about multivariate analysis, there are also other tools, for example, one by DeMarco and Turkeltalb, SVR, LSM, GUI, also has some nice documentation. You need some more requirements, but maybe you, re you succeed setting it up and feel free, feel free to play around with the data.